various organizations and analysts use different words. Uh, some speak of the poly crisis or perma crisis. Um, at Post Carbon Institute, we're using the term great unraveling, which was coined by Buddhist scholar and activist, Joanna Macy. Call it what you will, we need to talk about it and we need to know what we're talking about. These terms all refer to persistent, deeply rooted, existential level global threats and crises converging in the early 21st century. Now, this isn't a glass half empty type of situation. Bad things are always happening somewhere and every generation has its challenges. But here we're speaking of widely acknowledged trends that in most cases have been developing for decades. Now, warnings are turning into reports of damage and fatalities. I won't discuss the deep origin of the great unraveling, which is the subject of my recent book, because it's a long story. Suffice it to say that much of that story hinges on humanity's adoption of fossil fuels, vast energy sources that enabled a dramatic increase in resource extraction, manufacturing, <clears throat> and waste dumping. Fossil fuels facilitated the production of enormous wealth, which was unequally claimed. And they resulted in unprecedented human population growth from 1 billion to 8 billion in just two centuries. We've recently been adding another billion humans every 12 years and doubling our global rates of resource extraction and waste dump dumping every 25 years. So what are the principal manifestations of the great unraveling? Thus far, we've seen 1.1 degrees of warming globally, 1.3 degrees in North America. There's no realistic path to keeping warming to 1.5 degrees, the goal of the Paris Accords. We all know the implications, rising seas along with worsening storms, wildfires, and droughts. Seasonal temperatures in some regions will exceed the human body's adaptive capabilities, resulting in widespread heat deaths, along with waves of migrants moving toward the poles. A recent example, in Pakistan, summer floods killed nearly 2,000 people, left over 2 million homeless, damaged or destroyed over 20,000 schools, and inundated thousands of farms. These floods resulted from heavier than usual monsoon rains and melting glaciers that followed a severe heat wave, all of which are linked to climate change. Modern societies have become accustomed to unprecedented levels of energy throughput and to annual growth in energy to support economic expansion. Even our current level of global energy usage is likely, likely can't be maintained much longer, much less can it continue to grow. Fossil fuels are finite, depleting resources, and the world has agreed to move away from them in order to limit climate change. So far, solar and wind power are simply adding to, not displacing fossil fuels. And the minerals required to produce re renewable energy infrastructure at sufficient scale to replace fossil fuels probably don't exist. Further geopolitical conflict over control of fossil fuels and their supply lines has recently turned even deadlier, threatening world food supplies. The energy dilemma has become more obvious in Europe where the Russia-Ukraine war has led to high global fuel and electricity prices, along with shortages of diesel fuel and soaring fertilizer costs. The International Energy Agency has termed this the worst energy crisis since World War II. Climate change may be the world's most urgent pollution issue, but it's hardly the only one. Plastic and petrochemical pollution are undermining nature and human health. It's projected by, that by 2050, plastic in the oceans will outweigh the remaining fish. And hormone-mimicking forever chemicals are leading to rapidly falling sperm counts and reproductive problems in a long list of animals, including humans. Our current food system was built on the use of fossil fuels for fertilizers, pesticides, transport, packaging, processing, storage, and cooking. 
This has been a huge success story over the short term, resulting in a dramatic increase in global food supplies. However, it's a system that destroys soil and biodiversity. Meanwhile, it depends upon depleting climate-altering fuels at every stage. It's therefore a system built to fail unless it can be rapidly transformed. This year has seen a dramatic increase in food prices and food shortages around the world. Of course, the world's poor suffered disproportionately. For regions like East Africa that were already experiencing drought and famine due to agricultural failures and climate change, fertilizer price increases make a bad situation even worse. But even rich nations are seeing economic and political disruption due to food price inflation. As humans have proliferated, so have our domesticated animals. The domestic chicken is now by far the most abundant bird species on the planet. Altogether, the vertebrate biomass of the planet is greatly dominated by humans, cattle, and other domesticates. As we take over the planet, we take habitat away from other creatures. Extinction, extinction rates are orders of magnitude higher than at the start of the Industrial Revolution. An October report by the World Wildlife Fund revealed a 70% average loss of abundance of wild vertebrate and invertebrate animals across all species on land and in the oceans. Renewable resources, forests and fish, and non-renewable ones like minerals and fossil fuels are being drawn down as industrial economies grow. Soils are depleted as well, giving up tens of billions of tons per year. Miners are forced to target lower ore grades and use more energy for ore processing. Just one example, the World Economic Forum calculated that the average cost of producing copper has risen by over 300% in recent years, while average, the average grade of copper ore has dropped 30%. While the number of people living in extreme poverty, defined as subsisting on $1.90 a day, has fallen in recent years, that statistic masks the reality of worsening distribution of wealth across the world. Inequality has grown rapidly in China and the US, and the disparity between the world's richest and poorest nations has also grown. Billionaires leverage their wealth to gain political power, which they then use to make it easier to accumulate even more wealth. The, the consequences are blunted somewhat by economic growth. As the economic pie increases in size, so do the individual slices, even if the biggest slices are growing faster than the rest. But as economic growth inevitably shudders to a standstill, inequality becomes a human, social, and political nightmare. Money, is a human fiction we use to represent social power. But of course, money and debt have real world implications. Over the past decades, economic growth has been facilitated by borrowing. We consume now and pay later. Household, corporate, and government debt have all soared. Inflation and deflation cause periodic disruptions sometimes with enormous social cost, as we're seeing now with high rates of inflation worldwide. But the expectation of continual economic growth in the context of finite global resources and ecosystems almost guarantees a crash sometime this century when trillions in debts come due and trillions in apparent assets become worthless. Perhaps the most harrowing current example is Lebanon, where inflation will average nearly 180% this year, and where financial, political, and social collapse appear to be occurring simultaneously. Over the last three years, nearly 7 million people have died during the ongoing COVID-19 pan pandemic. While medical science is racing to develop better vaccines and treatments, Experts warn that future pandemics brought on by dense population, rapid travel, and the destruction of wild ecosystems could be far worse. Artificial intelligence, robotic weapons, including drones, 
deep fake video and other new technologies pose threats that experts are only beginning to assess. Just one example, new communication tools, notably social media, are convincing, convincing tens of millions to believe theories fabricated to demonize one group of elites so as to promote the interests of another group. Finally, as we see with climate change, international negotiations are key to addressing global systemic problems. And as we've seen with the COVID pandemic, nations with high internal levels of social cohesion fare much better at dealing with crises than those with high levels of distrust. Sadly, however, the trend globally is toward a breakdown of trust within and between countries. The Global Democracy Index has seen several years of declining overall scores. If, as societies, we cannot produce reliable information and respond to that information rationally and cooperatively, then it will be impossible for us to successfully address any of these converging crises. The result, then, is a great unraveling a likely trend of declining energy, food, wealth, and population, and increasing conflict throughout the remainder of this century. It's a path we should continue to work to avoid. But at this point, we should probably also be developing plans B, C, and so on, in case we end up where we're currently headed. <laughs>